Okay, you guys remember this other monstrosity? Yeah, that thing. We're gonna fly it. All right, so I tried. I tried. I tried. Oh, I don't even have it. I had a Rex 12. It's been sitting here. So it's either going in this or it's going in that, which I think I'm ordering one for that one just because I want that one flying. This thing came to me busted. Absolutely busted. And I made skids for it because I was planning on doing a Life Flight EC-135 that I deal with all the time. You guys have seen my channel. You see the EC-135s come in all the time for the fire department tracking people out here. You see how... <laughs> Poor little thing. So it, I even straightened out these things. You can kind of tell it's a little crooked. Well, it was a lot crooked before. Oh, I was trying to run a three-channel R3 switch with the one wire that can supposedly go from here to the NASA and I couldn't get it to work. So I just threw this one on here, got it all worked up. And uh, one of the things I remember you guys talking about is you wanted to know how to, the adjustment for the Addy mode. So like this is my Addy switch. So right now I'm in normal and then I'm in Addy mode. So you pretend like you're, you've, you've taken off and you're hovering, you're doing all your stuff, and then you switch into Addy mode. Whenever you get in here, you're gonna go to this spot right here. So if I reset these, we're gonna set that back to zero. That's all fucked up, look at it. What you're gonna be doing is we're gonna reset that so that when we flip into Addy mode, it doesn't move. See, every time I flip into Addy, Addy mode, we're normal. It tends to move the swash plate. So we're gonna move this back to where it was. And so now when I flip the switch, we get very little movement. A little bit more than what it was because it's it hasn't moved. It's been sitting here. I'm gonna give it a, a wiggle just to see. And this, this is a good test to see if It is tilting back whenever I tilt it forward. So I did something right. And let's see if the sideways motion works. Yeah, it's actually moving the opposite way, the way it's tilting, so it's counteracting. So the gyros are working the way it's supposed to be. So when I flip into Addy mode, I've been, I'm, I'm flying around, I'm doing all my stuff, I'm, I've done some stuff, and I'm, I'm in normal mode right now. That's why it's moving so fast. Then I flip into Addy mode, it shouldn't move too much. But see, it's still kind of working that way. Now it's on the table, so you're gonna have a little bit of reaction. But that's when you're sitting here on the table and you flip in any mode, you don't want that swash plate moving in any direction. That little spot right there, this little spot right here, is uh, where you want to adjust that out. And basically you're gonna move those two little things or you're gonna type it in like I can go in here and I can type in, instead of 20, I can do 25, enter. And then we'll flip the switch and see how it does. It's barely moving. You wanna get as much of the movement out of that as possible when you're adjusting for your Addy mode in the NASA and for your GPS. Now this doesn't have a GPS puck in it, so I'm not gonna have it set up for GPS. And it does automatically, it won't say, oh, where's your GPS puck at? Oh, we, we can't fly without a GPS puck. No, you can fly without a GPS puck. I'm in my servo setup for the NASA. This is my channel seven, which I have set up on this switch right here. And you can see there's manual, there's Addy mode, and then there's another Addy mode. So the top end, it usually will show up and it, what you want it to be is you want it to be blue. So if I adjust this down, you can see it moving and it will, okay. Now I'm in a fail safe mode if I'm in that position on the switch. So if I go there, it's perfect. I go there, it's perfect and vice versa. I come back. Okay, that position on the servo is out of adjustment. So. On mine, I have max positive, max negative, 
all that good stuff. So I'm just adjusting this one on my little dial and I'm adjusting it, you can hear it. So if I go too far one way, it goes in the fail safe. If I come back, it goes perfect. And if I go too far the other way, it goes in the fail safe. So we want those all to be in Addy mode and I try to get it as centered as I can. I go to my middle switch and then I go to my manual. And so these are, the max negative is on this side. The sub trim is actually what does the middle one. And then the uh, max positive is on this side. So for the jetty, that's where you're gonna adjust your NASA setup to get it in there and get it so that you're always, I, I, nine times out of 10, I'm flying in a manual mode. I just want it to fly. You can get it to where you can fly in any mode and what that does for those of you that are watching and haven't figured out what the Addy mode is or have dealt with it with a NASA, Addy mode will keep your helicopter at a consistent level. It'll drift and you can see a video of one of our guys that didn't get it set up right and his helicopter drifted way over until it hit uh, a buddy's truck. And then I was a dumbass and grabbed it and guided it off to the side and let it go and it, it it bounced down and came back up and it till it got to its addy mode until it's at altitude and went over and crashed into some bushes yeah this is lovely things that we've got to learn and you see the size of this computer it is teeny tiny i have to have glasses and magnifiers to read this shit so this is the last flight that i have in the log so it was turning about an average of 45 amps. So it's it's pulling a little juice. 1900 watts. Obviously the uh, the gear is wrong on here. And I think I'm using 10,000 milliamp packs in this thing. This thing has a really deep floor. So I was able to stick the two packs that I normally run in the crane into this thing. So that's not too bad. Well, we'll see what it does whenever we fire it back up. Another little tidbit of information. So I'm running 12.55 at my 70% throttle setting, which is actually 77.6% of a throttle going in. So I'm just below my 80%, which I like to run, but uh, I didn't want this thing screaming. But these things tend to do better at, 12.50 and up. I've seen guys up where they're up around 1350. Uh, it helps with the tail. Of course, that thing's turning 15,000 RPM at 12.50. So, yeah. All right, kids. So, I am trying to get this thing close as I can tracking wise. So, I'm using my digital pitch gauge. <laughs> it's late. But if you look at these blades, they're flat bottom blades with a really high curve. That's why they're really inefficient. And they suck to try to get the right pitch measurement. So I'm doing it two ways. So you see, I have it on here in a traditional way, but that's not, you know, it's got, a, it's got an angle on here. So when I'm doing it like this, you can see how it kind of goes on like that. And then the other way is to just take it off and do it flat in the same position and you get a totally different reading. So what I'm gonna do, so you can see I went through here and like these two started out at seven, six, and this is with the pitch gauge over the top of the blade, not resting on the bottom. These are, this is the difference that you can see in the pitches between putting it over the blade and resting it on the bottom of the blade. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a base of, and I'm, I'm looking at this one here, you know, it was nine, three, nine, one, nine, two, nine, three, but I put it on the bottom and you know, five, two, five, 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 three, four, three. So this number two blade might be way out of whack whenever I go to test it and see where it's hovering at and all that kind of good stuff. But I've got 
all of my numbers written down and we should be good to go for a test to see how well this thing is going to do. So, you know, you start out, I started out with this zeroed out pretty damn close on, you know, the motor is pretty flat and that's what I started with. And then you get all your blades lined up as good as you can. And, you know, you constantly rotate this thing around and I'm starting with mid pitch. So I went into my computer and I actually found mid pitch, you know, to do all my measurements by. So I'm consistent. Consistency is the key. So hopefully that number two blade doesn't show up to be an issue where I've got to crank it up in order to get it to track correctly. So we'll see. You know, if I get out there and this thing's going and I'm hovering, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a single blade when you're looking at the disc. It's got splits and it's going like this out at the ends. They, then, then I'll have to come in and I'll, I will do that number four. Was it number two blade? Yeah, it's my number two blade. So we're getting close to remaining this thing on the jetty just for shits and giggles. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm out here kind of building something. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. And just so you can see a pitch range, 2.2 to 16.3 so 16.50 40 so a 14 degrees of pitch total throw on this thing and hopefully i am in the middle somewhere i'm about nine two on the middle of it so that's a good place to start because of the way these goddamn blades are made they are just a horrible little blade just horrible. You see how flat they are. I mean, you can see a you can see a flat reflection on that thing. That's how flat they are. And then the tops, you can see how much of a curve this is. It is just an obscene amount of curve in this. They fly because we all fly them, but they are really an inefficient design. If you were ever setting up something to fly really smooth, go with a 3D blade that is symmetrical and your helicopter will fly so much smoother.